Welcome back to another episode of 5 a.m. Theology. As we said last week, talking about church leaders, as the spiritual leadership goes, so go the people. That was also true of ancient Israel's kings. As the king went, so did the people. What does God do? He doesn't just have his word proclaimed to the clergy. He also has it proclaimed to the king and the other civil leaders. Jeremiah 19, one to three says, thus says the Lord, go buy a potter's earthenware flask and take some of the elders of the people and some of the elders of the priests and go out to the valley of the son of Hinnom at the entry of the potsherd gate and proclaim there the words that I tell you. You shall say, hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I am bringing such disaster upon this place that the ears of everyone who hear of it will tingle. The elders of the people that Jeremiah is told to prophesy to about the coming destruction in verse one were the men who throughout scriptures sat at the city gate where business and personal transactions were made, court was held at times, public announcements were made and stuff like that. They were the representatives of the people often. God wanted everyone to know the disaster that he's about to bring on them, especially those who may have been somewhat responsible or who will likely take it seriously and have the most influence in leading the people to repent. Verses four and five, Chris, the verses after the ones we read, tell us just how sinful things had gotten. It says, because the people have forsaken me and have profaned this place by making offerings in it to other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers nor the kings of Judah have known. And because they have filled this place with the blood of innocence and have built the high places of Baal to burn their sons in the fire as burnt offerings to Baal, which I did not command or decree, nor did it come into my mind. The offering of children to the gods of Baal and Moloch has often been equated today with the abortion industry. And though no nation today is God's chosen nation, and therefore no nation is going to be judged by its king or its ruler, it still holds true that when the wicked rule, sin is usually rampant. Whether leader goes. Yep. Whether God will bring judgment on a whole nation or not, it does stand true that often when God brings judgment on the wicked, the righteous suffer right along with them. And that's going to be that way until the time of the final judgments. It's just like it was in Egypt's time. Yeah. This is the judgment that Jeremiah was proclaiming from God in chapter 19, verses seven to nine. Therefore, behold, days are coming, declares the Lord. In this place, I will make void the plans of Judah and Jerusalem. I will cause their people to fall by the sword before their enemies and by the hand of those who seek their life. I will give their dead bodies for food to the birds of the air and beasts of the earth. And I will make this city a horror, a thing to be hissed at. Everyone who passes by it will be horrified and will hiss because of all its wounds. And I will make them eat the flesh of their sons and their daughters, and everyone shall eat the flesh of his neighbor in the siege and in the distress with which their enemies and those who seek their life afflict them. And Chris, we see exactly this happen later on. Yeah, we do. Wicked rulers need to hear God's word and his warnings that he gives just as much today as they did in the prophet Jeremiah's day. All Christians, whether pastors or congregants, need not be afraid to proclaim God's word in the public square. We need to call our leaders to repentance and to righteousness by letter, in person, or even, like I said, in the public square. We need to pray for their salvation. We need to pray for them to rule justly. And we need to pray for them to uphold what they're sworn to do. And if we can, we should let them know that we're praying for them. And when we do that, use scripture because it's God's word that changes hearts. Amen to that. It's not the messenger, it's the message. That's right. And that's a good place to end today. Have a blessed morning, everyone.